Hey, what's up Aqua Amigos? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a small, cheap, and easy pond filter quickly. Just like the one that I have in my mini indoor guppy pond. My guppy pond is only 17 gallons, but you can do this on a much larger scale as well. And if you are someone who is new to aquariums or ponds, watching me make a pond filter like this is really going to help wrap your head around how simple biological filtration really is for ponds and aquariums. And if we take a look inside my mini pond, we will see that the water is crystal clear and there's hardly even any algae on the sides of this plastic bin. I've never wiped down or scraped the inside of this plastic bin and I've only had to take apart the filter once in the past year to clean it out. And that's because some of the roots from this aero plant were clogging the pump. And before I show you guys how to build this pond filter, I'm just going to show you guys me checking my water parameters on camera just to prove that this pond filter works very well. As you can see, I have zero ammonia, zero nitrites, and I am getting a nitrates reading which shows that my filter is in fact cycled and it's converting that ammonia into nitrites and then into nitrates. As you can see, my first nitrite test actually got a high reading, so I went ahead and checked the nitrites two more times. Both of those came out at zero. I'm thinking I might have just miscounted my drops when I was doing the first nitrite test, because these two tests came out perfectly fine. Now I'm going to remove the filter and show you guys how I made it. So this is my mini pond filter right here. The first thing that I have here is this plastic planter bucket. You can get these in the nursery section of any hardware store and they only cost a couple bucks. I believe the size of this one is 1.75 gallons. But like I was saying, if you have a bigger smallish pond, for example, you have like a 50 gallon pond, instead of using one of these planter buckets, you can use a five gallon bucket instead, which will be able to hold a lot more biomedia. And I'm going to empty out the contents of the filter so you can see how it works and how I made it. At the bottom of this planter bucket, I lined the holes at the bottom with plastic because I don't want any water to be able to come in through the bottom. I want all the water to enter through the top of this planter. Then I put in this small pond pump at the bottom of the planter. I bought this pump a few years ago from Harbor Freight. It cost me about $25 and I believe it is a 250 gallon per hour pump which would be way too fast for this little plastic tub pond. But the good news is that it does have a valve on it so I can regulate the flow. I strongly recommend getting a pump that does have some kind of valve on it to help you regulate the flow. And once I got the flow right on this pump, I went ahead and filled the planter with lava rocks. You can buy a big bag of lava rocks at the hardware store for roughly $5. And the total cost to build this little pond filter was only a little over $30, with the most expensive thing being the pump. And if the top of your pump doesn't quite reach the top of the planter or bucket that you're using, you can attach a piece of pond hosing to make it reach the top, or maybe some kind of tubing. And that's pretty much all there is to it. And you may have noticed that I also had a sponge in there and that was just some used filter media that a friend gave to me to jumpstart the cycle of this filter. And actually, if you'd like to, you could actually add some mechanical filtration to the top of this planter as well. I personally didn't do this, but that is an option if you would like to do that. And one thing that I really like about this setup is that my output doesn't quite go up above the water level, so it's really silent. And as you know, I did use lava rocks. You don't have to use lava rocks. You could use whatever biomedia you want. 
but if you're choosing to go the inexpensive route, I think Lava Rocks is a pretty good way to go. And the only thing that Biomedia does is it creates a place where beneficial bacteria can colonize. So compared to regular pebbles or stones, Lava Rocks just have a lot of surface area on them, which creates a lot of places for beneficial bacteria to colonize on. So that's the main goal when it comes to Biomedia. And roughly over the past year or so that I've had this setup, the filter's done a great job and it's kept my water crystal clear. And it's really as simple as that. Not a whole lot to it, guys. Okay, Alcamigo, so I figured this would be a good time to do my shout outs for this video. I'm on a boat right here with my family. My mom's driving over here. It's my mom's birthday. My dad's pouring. And of course we brought the dogs with us. And I have a shout out for TPW Has Puppies, Tim's and Liam's Fish and Turtles. Sleepy Girl, ZZZ, Luis Da Silva, Keeping It Koi, Twisted Koi, Jason Solomon, Aaron Gamber, Martin's Koi Pond and Garden, Daniel Sobrera, and Gordon. Thank you guys so much for being Aquamigos. I really appreciate it. If any of you guys would like a shout out in my next video, all you have to do is go down to the comments below and comment something with the word Aquamigo in it, and I'll shout you out in my next video. Aquamigos! If you did like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you went down there and gave this video a like. That would help me out so much. If you would like to see more of my videos in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also that bell notifications button. And I'll talk to you guys in my next video.